Welcome back to episode 15 of the Hoop Life Productions podcast. On this episode, me and Chance are going to talk about one of the biggest surprises in the NBA this year, which is the New York Knicks. We'll go over some of the players on the team that have made a big leap this year. And then in the more front office in uh, Leon Rose, the president of the team, coach Tom Thibodeau, and just overall what they've done to make a leap as a team that they have this year. Please check the description. I'll have our socials below there. Um, And continue to support us. We're on the road to 100. It's not a lot, but you got to start somewhere, right? And uh, so, yeah, thanks for checking us out. And I guess I'll play the intro now. Knicks are relevant again. Who would have thought? The team has been an absolute joke the last what decade or so ever since the Carmelo Anthony, Jeremy Lin crazy yeah. year they had. And like even then, like they've just never been what I know our generation has grown up hearing from our parents and from the media, like the Knicks have always been that franchise. They've never really been that for us and uh it'll be cool to see what they can do this year, maybe to build back towards the top. Um, yeah, I'm I'm impressed with what they've done. When you think about like, you know, the resurgence of Julius Randle this year, he's an All Star reserve. Congrats to him. Um, first year head coach Tom Thibodeau, Leon Rose, the president, who's brought in a bunch of high class guys to the front office, and it's kind of worked from top to bottom for this Knicks team. And I think, you know. A great organization starts at the top, and that's pretty much what Leon Rose is. Um, yeah, I, I the president. I remember when they brought him in. Like, you know, I was watching all the uh, big media shows talking about it, and they're hyping it up actually quite a bit. You know, which is surprising because the media is usually wrong. And uh, <laughs> um, it was it was weird because from my perspective, it was like, well, they're going to bring in one new president, and everything's going to change, and. Looks like that's exactly what's happening so far. So right, it's a complete 180 of what they've had. Right, yeah. it's been constant missed draft picks. You know, you know, even it didn't matter what pick they had. It was just they would just miss on almost every pick outside of like Chris Dobbs Porzingis. And then you talk about free agency and the hopes they would have of bringing in these stars, and it would just never happen because of this lackluster front office they had. Nobody wanted to play for them, but now I think they're building building a winner and guys are going to want to play for them right you know yeah. outside of it just being at madison square garden so and as of right now that porzingis trade isn't looking too bad for them with the no oh, it's crazy at first it was like <laughs> what are you doing like, this return looks terrible like the, the mavericks are really good the the pick's going to be in the late 20s and dennis smith jr looks awful and he just got shipped to detroit of all places the so. return still doesn't look great but the overall dealing of getting him out of the way because it looks like it wasn't going to, they thought it wasn't going to end well yeah. for them. And it looks like they were right about that. Yeah. Um, as of now, Porzingis could pick up his play and Mavericks might not trade him. We I don't still know. don't think we can ever say they won the trade, no. but, but it doesn't look as bad as, as it, it did, did at one point. Yeah. Like a year ago. So yeah. yeah, let's start off the top with Leon Rose. Um, I had some quick notes on him. He's the best leader they have had in the front office in quite some time. He brought in coach Thibs. And some solid veterans on the team. And he had a great draft, and he's shown pati- patience unlike past presidents for the New York Knicks. You know, I think one thing we've learned in sports and a lot of the athletes listening, like probably not a lot of like pro athletes listening, but, you know, um, I think they might not like this, but I think we we tend to believe a lot that if a guy can play at a high level or coach at a high level that he can do anything in his respective sport. Um but we saw, like, like, Phil Jackson was not the answer for this team. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, congrats to him. He's starting to prove some people wrong, but he's shown to not be a great owner. No. Um, um, and you take a guy like Rayon Rose, who doesn't have that background, and he comes in, and all you got to do is know how to do your job. You don't have to have the, 
you don't have to be an 11 time champion coach to lead a team as a president and uh shout out to him because he's made a huge difference in this team and uh, yeah, proved a lot of us wrong. Yeah, he wasn't exactly given this great situation in New York. Like, he got a hot mess, right? Um, you know, I think a year ago, their top guys were... Juli- I mean, it was still Julius Randle, but he wasn't even close to the player he is this year, right? Like, mm-hmm. people considered him to be a non-winning player, like a black hole mm-hmm. on offense. And then Dennis Smith Jr., there was hopes that he would be you know, the point guard of the future for the Knicks, but that didn't happen. Obviously, Frank Ntilikina and Ke- Kevin Knox are high draft picks that aren't even in the rotation anymore. Yeah. So despite all that, they've still managed to put a a competent team on the floor finally, and, you know, Leon Rose has a lot to do with that. Yeah, and this is kind of a side point from the other ones we'll have here, but uh, I think, I don't know how you feel about this, but as, like, Midwestern guys, because we're from, we're both from Michigan. Um, the teams that represent our area are Detroit, Chicago, New York, and Milwaukee. And other than Milwaukee, we haven't really had like a great basketball. It's had a lot of bad basketball product been out. So seeing another, even though they're a rival of like Detroit, seeing another Midwestern team come up and rise, I think it's just really good for yeah, the whole the area. Knicks, like the Knicks of all. The teams Knicks too. being the Knicks. Yeah. Um, Another guy that deserves a ton of recognition for what he's done is in his first year as the head coach is Tom Thibodeau. Um, just some quick notes on him. He's a defensive-minded coach. Old school, but he's perfect for the, the culture going forward. He's raised the ceiling for every player on the roster, and he preaches making the right play in team basketball. Every man matters, and I think this is kind of what he's done for this Knicks team. Like I said, he's raised the floor, and by making the right play, you win more games, and we saw with Julius Randle, he wasn't he wasn't a guy last year that like made the right play. He would make the play for his um, personal stats, but he mm-hmm. wouldn't make the play for the Knicks. He's kind uh, of a black hole in the offense, and he's become yeah, he's been a, a shining star in a way. So yeah, but it's quite a back to Coach Tibbs, he's he's been on a few teams in the last few years, but like the constant thing is is the culture that he brings defense and winning right i mean he's always brought a good product like you look at uh chicago they haven't been good since he mm-hmm. left um minnesota as we've talked about they're just in such an awful weird spot the one t- the, the one time they were competent in the playoffs with him as the coach yeah. and i think he's starting to evolve because these guys on the knicks correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure it's not the same dibs team where the starting five plays a heavy 90 minutes a game no they got a strong second unit yeah so. and uh that's always been his like what people will complain about is that he plays the guys too much and yeah like Julius Randle I'm sure is playing a lot of minutes but for good reason he's their best player and he's playing incredible this year but you know one through ten I like their I like their units um their starting lineup obviously isn't very strong outside of Julius Randle but their second unit you know makes up for it and you know that's really where most of their scoring comes from when you think of guys like Derrick Rose who they just traded for their first round pick, um, Emmanuel quickly. You know, you got Alec Burks coming off the bench. So there's there's a, a punch offensively that they bring in the second unit. How do you feel as a Pistons fan seeing Dero's leave and go there? I mean, I didn't I mean, mind. I'm sure I was you're not too attached. I was I was slightly surprised that he didn't request a trade to a contender. Like a contender, yeah. The Knicks are on the way up, but they're not. Obviously, they're not there yet. Like they're not going to do anything in the postseason if they make it. But you know, I'm happy for Derrick Rose. It's where he wanted to go, and you know, I it's getting, not the worst situation. Yeah, and us getting back uh, Dennis Smith Jr. He's been slightly inconsistent, but he's kind of playing his way into you know playing shape. You know, he wasn't getting any time in New York, but last night I know he had 14 points on like six for nine shooting. So, you know, um. I like what he's done, but, you know, obviously Derrick Rose is a high-level player. Of course. So, yeah, let's talk about... Talk about RJ? Yeah, RJ Barrett. So this season he's averaging... Well, at the time that I put the stats down here, it was about a week ago, so I'm sure it hasn't changed that much. But he's averaging 17 points, um, 6.4 rebounds, 3 assists on 43% shooting, and 28.7% from 3. So obviously he's got a lot of work to do. 
in yeah. terms of his jump shot, but like 17 points and six rebounds in your second year is not too bad. Six rebounds, really good to see from a shooting guard. Um, yeah. And I think his next step is just to bring that playmaking up. Like, and I know he's a two guard, so it's not his sole responsibility, but you look at the fact that he, his two point guards that play, or the three other guards he plays with heavy, or, yeah, heavy minutes um, are um, quickly Rose and uh, Austin Rivers. Those guys don't spread yeah, the ball scores. out a lot. Yeah, scores, so I think yeah. if he could do that, it would take a whole new step to his game. And then obviously Alfred Payton spreads the ball a little bit. But uh, but um, if he could do that, it would be great. And like you said, he's, silver, he's become quite... I don't want to say quite the defender, but his length really He's a plus helped. defender. Yeah, he's a plus sure, defender. His position. Um, just get the, his assists up and his shooting for her. Shooting's always kind of been an issue with him, even in college. So uh, Still, you know, still only 20 years old. Yeah. There's so much time for him to be better. But, for sure. You know, for him to be averaging sec- 17 points in his second year, I mean, that's that's a good jump from last season. Um, we kind of already talked about Julius Randle, but I didn't really go over yeah. like the type of stats that he's putting up. So at the time that I did these notes, he was averaging 22.3 points a game, 10.9 rebounds, 5.8 assists, and he's 40th in PER um, at 19.96. And if you compare that to last year, like it's not even close, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, he wasn't an efficient player last year, but he's taking his game to a whole new level. He makes the right play now. He's not a black hole on offense. He's you know, leading the team in points, rebounds, and assists. Like yeah, he's, he's doing does everything. everything. Yeah, and they run their offense through him, and he's done a really good job with that. Surprisingly, so um, some other guys in my notes that I want to, or one more guy that's like that I really want to talk about is their late first round pick, Emmanuel Quickly. Yep, he has caught the NBA world by surprise. Um, as a late first round pick, he's he's played a key role as a scorer and facilitator off the bench. He can score from all three levels and has a really good floater that he uses in the paint. And uh, yeah, that floater is really nice. Like, yeah, I was watching it. There's not a lot of guys that have that in this league. Steph has it. Uh, floater is like a really underrated part of yeah. like an offensive arsenal. Like, For sure, because you can do it from any angle, and if you get really good at it, like defenses usually don't expect a floater. They're either expecting a pass or like a like a pull up jumper, mm-hmm. like. And he's he's sitting at um, so I'm reading here here he's sitting at 36 percent from three on four and a half attempts a game, which is pretty good for the usage. Yeah, as a rookie too. So yeah, I mean they're getting what more than they expected out of him. I think more than anyone expected. But well, I think you had him when we did our mock draft as like a guy you really liked, didn't you? I did, but I mean he was he even went, I had him as a guy that I liked, but I still had him around where he was initially drafted at 26. So. I didn't expect him to play this key of a role mm-hmm. this early on, but I'm not necessarily shocked by it. Um, you know, averaging 11.8 points and 2.7 assists as a rookie is pretty good, especially when you consider where he was drafted. So. And four and a half threes a game on only 18.8 minutes. He's going out there and he's shooting that ball. Hey, he's, <laughs> he's taking advantage of the minutes that uh, Tibbs was giving him. So. For sure. Um. Another another guy I want to mention is Mitchell Robinson, who's been a little a little bit disappointing, banged um, up right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we know who he brings, and you know what he's going to bring for now and you know the rest of his career. He's a rim protector and lob threat. He's just struggled with foul trouble, and then you know on the second unit they got Nerlens Noel, who is no slouch himself, right? Um, on in defense, terms of defense, he's like the same player, really. Like you could. Yeah. If Mitchell Robinson is in foul trouble, like it's a good guy the, to mentor Mitchell. Yeah, yeah it's not a bad thing that you can throw in you yeah. know, those Noel there. So I like their their depth at the five. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what are some other guys that we have yet to mention? It's like all the like big main guys, but I know one guy that um, has kind of been, I guess, disappointing in a way this year as a rookie. He'll be topping. Um, I know you have a lot of that has to do with. The Randall, step that Randall's taking, yeah, so and just his, yeah, I agree completely. Um, I still like his potential going forward as like a, you know, he was the eighth overall pick in the draft, um, but but for now he brings a lot of energy and scoring off the bench. So you know, a solid career is ahead for him. Obviously, it's just yeah, we just hope this to see more from him. He's going to be at a minutes restriction, you know, but 
it's okay because it's a good problem to have having yeah. Obi Toppin coming off your bench. It's a really good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then their starting point guard for now. I don't think this is a long term thing, but Alfred Payton. Yep. Um, I said he was likely to be moved at the deadline, but now that like we're getting closer to that, I I would say it's fifty fifty. But he's the best passer on the team. He's a plus defender. Um, but he just doesn't offer much scoring, and that's he's a big reason why they're dead last in mm-hmm. scoring as a team. So Yeah, and like it also says right here, like Reggie Bullock is their best shooter on the team. And mm. I mean he's a solid He's a plus shooter. He's a good shooter. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think you want him to be your best shooter on the team. No. I think that has a lot to do with like they just get their offense up, see guys like RJ continue to get better. Uh that's really RJ is the biggest for me, their biggest, uh, I don't say question mark, but, like, biggest, um, that's what they need the most is him to take another step because Randall can't do it all. I mean, actually, he can. He's doing it all, but he, for them to continue to get better. Yeah, the starting backcourt of Alfred Payton and um, R.G. Barrett isn't exactly getting the job done yeah. in terms of shooting, so it's, it's, it's like... It's key that they have Reggie Bullock in that lineup just because they need that floor spacing because that backcourt obviously isn't spacing the floor out at all. So. And then they've got the two guys who just haven't worked out for them in uh, Frank N- Nilakina and Kevin Knox. Um, Kevin Knox, I think he's doing better this year, but I know last year he was like statistically like the worst player in the league. Like, yeah, I'm re- I'm really hoping that he gets a new situation. Yeah. Um, and the same with Frank Ntilikina. Um, I think he's a restricted free agent this offseason, so it's probably more likely to see Frank get moved than it is Kevin Knox, but I think a new situation would be good for both of them. Um, and then there was two more guys that I wanted to mention as, like, bottom of the rotation guys. It's Taj Gibson. Um, he's known as Tibbs guy. It seems like wherever <laughs> Tibbs goes... Man. Gibson and they got Rose manages. back too. They did assist the mm-hmm. New York Bulls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then Austin Rivers, you know, score off the bench, kind of like a lot of other guys. Um, and they had Rose in Minnesota with Taj too. Yeah, just bring those guys yeah. everywhere. Yeah, they they just follow Tibbs. Where's Little Dang at? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Joakim Noah was on the Knicks. Yeah, Little Dang's <laughs> still getting paid by the Lakers, like five million a year. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Not you sit on the couch making five million. Wish I could relate to that, but um. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's it for the player analysis. I wanted to talk about what they could do moving forward. Let's talk about the upcoming trade deadline. I had guys that could get moved as Kevin Knox, Frankton, Tillakina, and Alfred Payton. Um, it's pretty obvious that those guys are in their long-term plans, and I would like to see them get something in return. I don't think it would be much, but that's really all you can hope for those three guys. Yeah, and yeah, those guys just. Like you it's said, not allowed they to, need new situations. Allowed to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm, um, in terms of trade targets, I had a lot of upcoming free agents. In fact, all of these guys on my list are free agents, if I'm right. Um, I had Victor Oladipo as a guy, um, Andre Drummond, P.J. Tucker, DeMar DeRozan, J.J. Redick for some shooting, and you know, same thing with Wayne Ellington, and then LaMarcus Aldridge and John Collins. Um, what do you think about uh, any of those guys, and which one do you think is most likely? Most likely, I mean, just off the fact that he seems to be the most likely to be traded in general is Andre Drummond. So I guess Andre Drummond. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, I like the most on this team. I Obviously, would love Old Depot in the yeah, backcourt. Yep, I was going to say him. Obviously, John Collins is a great player. He's, I would like to see him anywhere. Um, JJ Redick. And P.J. Tucker, probably, in terms of just fit. Like, those guys will just mm-hmm. come in and do their job. They yeah, don't know what you do. Ends, yep. Do with a guy like DeMar DeRozan but, uh, or some other Aldridge, I don't know. But uh, I think J.J. Reddick's another one that's really yeah. likely. Just from their lack of shooting, they could yeah. definitely use him coming off screens and stuff. And, and Reddick already broke his playoff streak, so you don't think he has to worry about that anymore no. going to the <laughs> Knicks. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would love uh, Vic on this team. Um, Collins, like I said. Yeah, if they want to make some noise in the playoffs, they can't go into that with what they have on the roster currently, right? Drummond um, would just be in another situation that he's in with Jared Allen right now if he goes there with Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. So I, I. And another thing with the Knicks is they don't have to match salary because 
as we speak, they already have salary cap space, which is kind of weird because it's rare to see a team in the middle of a season with like twenty million yeah. to spend. It's kind of it's kind of rare, but um, but that does make it easier to bring in another star for their team this season, and maybe you can get Oladipo to an extension as well. For sure. Um, in terms of this off season, right after the playoffs happened. They could have up to seventy million dollars in cap space, um, but as of right now, like with the team going into next year, it would be around sixty-five million. Um, with Derrick Rose, Frank Ntilikina, Alfred Payton, Alec Burks, um, Reggie Bullock, Nerlens Noel, and Taj Gibson as expiring contracts. Okay. So, what do you think is the best option for them in free agency? Do you think they should go? all out for a couple of lower tier stars or do you think they should focus on the draft this year and just continue to develop i'd say they focus on the draft continue to develop because that would be such a nicks thing to just go for yeah. like the best guy available who's not going to make you too much better yeah. um there's some guys on here like let's see the like, free agency class is it's, not it's, that it's, good. it's pretty it's, weak but yeah. but a guy like uh maybe spencer dinwiddie mm-hmm. or uh there's another guy in here. Yeah, I like a guard rotation of Dinwiddie, Derrick Rose, if they re-sign him, and then um, Emmanuel quickly. That's yeah. all. That's a, that's some offensive firepower yeah. that they really haven't had. I don't think. I think Serge Ibaka can come and fit anywhere, so I wouldn't mind seeing him. Or like, they need more scoring, so maybe a guy like Norman Powell or Devontae Graham. Um, as far as the other bigger stars, like Lowry, Drummond, DeRozan, uh, I don't know. I just DeRozan, I love him as a player, but yeah. on the Knicks and their already lack of shooting, I don't yeah. like it too much. Yeah. Um, For Sean Holmes, I really like. You made a post about him yesterday, right? Yeah, the other uh, day. Yeah, the other day. So, I mean, he's having a great year, but they, they already have Mitchell Robinson. Bringing in a big man would just be weird to me. Yeah, but, I like. I would just like them to bring back that core. Um. Well, I was going to say, I would just hope that they bring back Noel and Mitchell Robinson, because I think they get it done at the five in the first and second unit. But I think they should, if I was them, I would sign one star, and that would be Victor Oladipo, but only to a certain price. I'm not giving him the max. Like, I'm not I'm not giving him $30 million. I'm only giving him probably what his current contract is right now. That's what I would offer him. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, but, you know. Um, he's not a max guy anymore. And then, in terms of the draft, that's what we'll talk about next. They have two first-round picks and two second-round picks. If you were them, would you trade up with your two mid mid first rounds and you know maybe get up into the lottery, or would you stay put and grab two guys in the first? I'd stay put. Oh, I know this is another conservative answer, but I'd stay put because this draft is so deep. Like, I've been researching this draft a little more these last few weeks because you had mentioned to me that we're going to start talking about it more. And, and That's uh, where the views are. Yeah, yeah, that's where the views are. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, that are, yeah, our mock draft video, yeah, by the way, is like... It's going up every day. Uh, it's over 800 now, yeah. and then you look at our other videos, it's like around 50 or way under. Yeah. So I would need you guys in the comments so we know what you guys want. Because mm-hmm. uh, exactly it helps a out a lot. Comment plug there, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I would just go with the mid picks because uh, there's a lot of guys in this draft that I really like. Like, um, uh, wow, I'm freezing here. <laughs> uh, he likes no one. <laughs> yeah, that, wow, the, the one point guard. Oh, you've boy. talked about Brandon Boston. Brandon Boston. Sharif yeah. Cooper. Sharif Cooper. Yeah. yeah, I really love Sharif Cooper, and his stock is starting to rise. I don't know if he'll be available. A lot of guys are around, high on him, but uh, Sharif Cooper, uh, Brandon Boston, uh, Josh Christopher. There's a lot of guys in this draft that. Uh, Another guy I want to mention is Corey Kerbsa. Yep. Out of Gonzaga, the mm-hmm. best shooter in the draft, and yep. I think. It's a conservative pick, but you know what you're gonna get, like yeah. like a three and D guy, and you can't, obviously you can't get enough of those. So, but I would make the argument that the Knicks, ever since Leon Rose came in, have been quite conservative in everything they've done, and it seems to be working out for them. <laughs> it's working a lot better so, than like so. Can, we're gonna get, yeah. I, I mean, they're still gonna have a lot of cap space, but yeah. before it was like, okay, Kyrie and Kevin Durant are for sure gonna come here, even though we're an absolute joke of a franchise. We're gonna. We're going to luck into the lottery and get Zion, even though it was only a 14% chance. So <laughs> They they were in that same position these last like 
decade almost that uh yeah if you're an nfl fan uh the dallas cowboys are kind of this like they kind of like do whatever they can to bring in it's all talk talk and views it's all and, talk, yeah. and it's good to a certain extent because they want to make money and i understand it's a business but it increases the net worth of what their franchise is yeah but as you see like we're talking about the Knicks because they went the other way. Like, they just because mm-hmm. they decided to be more conservative and do what's best for the basketball product. And, uh, yeah, that's really why this, so we're making a video about them for the, is because of how much better they have been the top down all year. Yeah, they, des- they deserve the recognition for sure from us and a lot of other yeah. YouTube channels. So, yeah, the Knicks. I know that. Leon Rose is listening to this right now. So happy that we're talking about him, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he has the Finally, time to listen to Finally, my favorite us. podcast is talking about <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, the New York Knicks, they're relevant again, and they're here to stay. Hopefully. I, I'm happy to say that because I feel so bad for what the Knicks fans have gone through. Yeah. Um, and I can kind of relate because my Pistons have been... Kind of on this irrelevant stage as well the last Ooh. decade or so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who are they? Are they still in the NBA? There's a oh. team in Michigan? Yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's rough out here in New York and Detroit. But, you know, things are looking up. Um, the Knicks hopefully making the playoffs. Maybe make some noise if they can pick up some other guys. But, yeah, that's the end of our New York Knicks video. Go Knicks. Um if you did enjoy, drop a like, hit the subscribe button, join the journey to 100 subscribers. Um, yeah, you can check us out in our various socials below. And uh, AJ, you got anything else? Um, everyone have a have a great day, and thanks for listening. Yep. Um, thank you. Go Knicks! <laughs>